Welcome back to the Short PLC Videos channel. Today I've got something kind of interesting that I've been working on for a couple of weeks and all the parts just showed up today. And what it is, is I wanted to get an HMI option for, uh, especially a new one, for my, uh, all my Modicon, especially my compacts, out in my plant. I have a lot of compact 984s Thankfully, the 484s have already gone away, but uh, for the most part, there's a couple scary 484s sitting out there, and they are not compact at all. But I do have quite a few. I've even got some Quantums, but mostly, mostly in my plant, as far as Modicon, I have uh, 984 compacts. So maintaining those with an H with uh, HMIs can be difficult. Every summer, it seems like I lose a couple to heat the HMIs themselves. Um, not very often does the Modicon PLC actually die, but usually it's the HMI. It could be an Azicom that finally dies. It could be uh, a Panelmate Pro, like a Cutler Hammer HMI. And a lot, a lot of times, some of these HMIs are pretty simple. You know, it's a washer or it's um, a draw furnace or something like that. The HMI just finally gives it up, and uh, replacing that can be difficult. Uh, a lot of these HMIs back in the day. Uh, especially the color hammer ones, they supported Modbus Plus. Well, that's a pain in the butt um, that I don't, I don't really have a good answer for. But I do have a thought. If I can get some, if I could theoretically get some of my HMIs that um, are within a cabling distance of an open Modbus port, if I could convert them to Modbus uh, to a different HMI. Maybe I could stockpile these Modbus Plus capable HMIs for a while and kind of try to get myself uh, in better shape. So I wanted to show you what I'm working on here as far as these, uh, this new HMI I'm trying out from Automation Direct. And uh, maybe if it spurs on some questions, I could work on some little how-tos for you guys. Automation Direct has some pretty good support and quite a few YouTube videos for little things like how to turn off the beeping because uh, their HMIs by default beep every time you touch a button on them. So that's exciting. Uh, it's pretty easy to disable, but until you figure out how to do it or find their little video, it could be kind of obnoxious, especially when you're just trying to shake it down. So, so I'll flip you over and uh, show you what I'm working on. I got an old 984 compact right over there. And let me get you going. All right, so have a good one. Okay, as, as mentioned, here's my 984 compact. It's an A145, for those of you keeping track at home. It has a nine pin Modbus and a nine pin Modbus Plus. If I were to pan you over here, this compact has eight pin RJ45 Modbus one and two, and a Modbus Plus on the nine pin. So that one would need different cabling. All right, so Automation Direct. This is an ea 9 dash T7CL-R. It is kind of a base model of their of their E9 series. Uh, it's not a low quality or low end HMI in any way. It just has less so certain less features than maybe the not the one that doesn't have the dash R on it. That's my interpretation of their part numbering scheme because the the one that doesn't have the dash R on the end, the T7CL has three serial connections i can't remember what they are offhand i think they support like data highway plus and things like that this one will still do 484 for i'm sorry ah modicon this one will still do for rs 485 and it will do rs 232 and it will support even some of the antivity stuff from my younger years when i was a co-op at antivity back when it was uh just formed in antivity from steeplechase and think and do merging together back in 05 all right, so this thing, the only thing that's a little weird about it is it has a 15 pin connector out the back. And I believe that's so they can support 232 and 485 on the same connector. So if I were to tip this up, you'll see my USB connection right there, which is what I'm programming with, and a 15 pin, which is the eight pins on the top and seven pins on the second row. It is not the five and then five and then five, like a VGA connector. 15 pin standard. Uh, standard density 
and they have some cabling options for you and you can see my program running and I can see that I have it unplugged because I'm showing some logic stuff over there. Uh, it's a uh, Monday guys. Let me plug that in for you. It's not very compelling, but I just plugged it in. And as you can see, my bits are moving and my buttons working. Very cool. I guess. This is a little Hello World program. I actually only got this stuff at 10 a.m. today. It's about 5 o'clock on Monday. Hanging out in the office making you guys a video. I'm going to unplug it and plug in the PLC out of the computer so when we get over there you can actually see it running. Come on, baby. Anyway, diverting your attention over to here. Uh, this is what I decided to do as a solution for cabling. So Automation Direct offers cables. You can buy them. They looked a little expensive. The HMIs are extremely reasonable in my opinion, especially coming from the Panel View Plus world of Alan Bradley. Um, 15 pin to a Winford Engineering. It's upside down, but you can see that Winford.com. They're a mid-Michigan company, best I can tell. Um, it's a 15 pin to basically 15 plus the shield, and these are spring connections. They work fine. And it's just a regular old nine pin DB9 type cable, just a serial cable. This one I think is uh, straight through, I believe. I, it doesn't matter because I chopped the end off right there. And uh, I figured out my wire colors on the pin and I wired it in. And then when I switched two and three, started to work because <laughs> I did it wrong the first time so very simple program basically just blinks a couple of lights and uh, I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna bring you over to the PLC uh, I'm very excited about this because I have a lot of Modicon 984 compacts in my plant and when the HMIs die I'm really up a creek basically I have to send them out for repair hold my breath hope they work they're really expensive to replace you're using eBay used parts um, not a good scenario. So these being new, the Automation Direct guys have been really good with support when I've had a few questions in the past. I have one Automation Direct HMI in my plant. It is running to a Micrologix PLC and it works really well. So I have one program that works that I can base everything off of in my plant. And that's really been helpful. So let's bring you over to the PC and just show you this very simple one network program that's running just to make um, the magic happen in the background there. So here we are over at the PC. It is connected to the PLC and it's live. You can see I have a half second timer, a half second timer. Basically they're, uh, they're fighting over this bit. So it's on for half a second and it's off for half a second. I take a normally close of that 41 coil, come over here and drive the two coil so they're basically they're just opposites of each other. So that's why you were seeing on the HMI, on off, on off, they were these two coils, 41 and two. Then when I was pressing the uh, press button, that button was 48 and the button itself would turn green because I have 48 configured in the button to show like that. 42 was the indicator right above the uh, prep the push button so 42 was being turned on by the logic solving and 48 was turning on because the HMI was writing a 1 to 48 and it was watching for it coming back pretty simple stuff this is a ProWorks NXT this is what I use for most of my Modicon work I have guys in my plant who like the old 16-bit Taylor software I'm not as comfortable with it as they are so I just use ProWorks NXT, and that's how I print my, my Modicon programs too. So there's that. So there you have it. That's what I've been working on the last uh, few days as far as planning, getting some parts ordered, cables, uh, deciding which uh, PLC I wanted to use. I wasn't really sure what I was going to find out there, to be honest with you. Um, some of the stuff in my plan is still going to be tricky because some of them are running on old Zycom PCs and the PC actually does stuff like it runs a Wonderware program or something on Windows 2000 
Uh, it's kind of a nightmare to uh, handle those. You pretty much find an identical model, ship it in from wherever in the world it is, and hope your hard drive will boot it up. And while it's all down, you make an image of the hard drive, and you go find yourself an old uh, parallel ATA, you know, like with lots of 40 pins on them, or 40, 40 whatever pins on them, uh, 44 pins maybe, and the old laptop um, with uh, spinning disks because Windows 2000 doesn't support the solid state driver, blah, blah, blah. I'm not a computer expert at any rate, but uh, we have to get them working. We have to make the green lights turn on in the, in the plant, so we do our best. But uh, this is one way I'm kind of trying to tackle this, uh, all this stuff from the past that's been in this plant since the mid-90s. And uh, we can't just rip everything out and make an Allen Bradley panel view plus work. It just won't work that way with these old modicons that talk a special RS-232 version of Modbus. A lot of the companies out there support, they say, oh, we support Modbus RTU. But what they really mean is they support um, RS-485 implementation of Modbus because it's an open standard and it can run on 485 and that's a lot higher performance. Well, the old Schneider Modicon stuff is still chugging away on 232, you know, with the uh, five or six wires needed, the CTS, RTS wires still needed, and all that stuff. So um, you you get a lot less choices, but the Automation Direct guys came through. You know, I bought that thing. I think it was over $500, but it's a color touchscreen panel, you know, a seven seven inch display. And it supports just a ton of different protocols. So it, it could be a flexible part number for me in the future. So let's see what happens. And uh, we'll talk to you all later.